Hi, welcome to another episode of Match Quarters Quick Hits. Today we're going to be talking about breaking down a form formation, breaking down an opponent, kind of how to go about that, talking about uh, what data points to use, how to use them, and kind of my thought process behind breaking down an opponent, going from the formation uh, all the way through the play. Uh, so as we begin, I always start at the very beginning of the clip. Uh, obviously, uh, here we've got uh, what looks to uh, be a three by one formation. Uh, Going to label this probably 20 personnel unless he gets on top of the ball. Uh, this usually with the H back, and as more people use these kind of hybrid H tight ends, uh, anytime they're off the ball, I like to call that a 20 personnel because it, it is a two back set in the sense that he can go either direction. It's kind of got a two way go. If he's attached, then it would be an 11 personnel. Uh, if he was spread all the way out, it'd be a 10 personnel. Uh, the reason why I like to do that, especially at the high school level, is because a lot of guys don't package their offense. They're not sending in a bunch of packages because at the high school level, you have kind of what you have. So here, uh, this is going to be a 20 personnel. If he were to attach, it'd be 11. Now, the reason why I do that is because it keeps things consistent all the way through. So I know when they line up in a 10 personnel formation, this is what I'm getting. When they line up in a 20 personnel formation, this is what I'm getting. Now, if you are with an opponent, if you're in a district with an opponent that uses actual packages, then you would label that. So for instance, if this was an actual tight end and he, he would get on the ball or off the ball, but then they would sub him out and bring in maybe another running back to do a split back look or bring in another receiver for 10 personnel and they're constantly switching packages, then I would use this personnel grouping to then label those personnel groups. So I know, hey, when we got this player in or these players in, this is what I'm getting. So just for simplicity purposes at the high school level, since most people aren't uh, using personnel packages, I usually go by what the formation's personnel grouping looks like. So uh, let's start here. It looks like we've got a three-by-one quarterback's talking to him. Okay, he's going to shift across. Okay. So I usually run it all the way up until the play starts so I can get, get the formation. Now the down distance, hash, yard line, all that extra stuff that usually is done prior to when you do the breakdown, uh, that can be done by a low, lower level coach or a different coach on the staff when you break that down. So here I already said we got 20 personnel. The set ended up in a two by two uh, set. Now the set is different from the form. The set is the amount of receivers I have on either side. So for instance, this is a two by two. I would let just label that set 22. What that allows me to do is go back and look at all the two by two. Let's say that they run uh, an 11 personnel out of this or they run a 10 personnel uh, out two by two out of this. I can go and look and see, okay, are they running the same concepts out of the same set or does each different uh, personnel grouping and different formation bring its own different? Now at the high school level, a lot of times guys will just give you a different formation uh, for that week but they'll it's keep the set the same. So maybe one week they run this play out of 10 personnel, and then the next week they're running it out of 20 personnel like, I, like I've shown above. So that kind of keeps things consistent, and it kind of gives you a data point to go a little bit deeper into it. So here I always start with the backfield, which is gun far. Now the reason why it's gun far is because the back is away from the strength call. The strength call, anytime that there's a slot, uh, I'm going to call the strength call and I'm gonna to the H, and I'm going to treat him just like he's a tight end. So in this case, I've got this slot right here. He's clearly outside of the tackle box. Now, if he's inside the tackle box, the strength will be the two receiver side. Now, it's important that your staff, when you're doing this, that you make a clear line in the sand on what is a slot versus what it is in the backfield. If he's, if he's going to have his inside foot crotched on the tackle, are you considering that inside the box or are you considering that outside the box? If he's lined up right behind the tackle, like some teams will do, are you still considering that as a slot? Or are you considering him inside uh, the box? So these things are important. Not everybody's going to put the sniffer in the B-gap. Not everybody's going to put the, the slot clearly outside of the tackle box like I have right here. So for me, this is a gun far slot twin. So I'm going to put gun far slot twin because I always want to label the strength first. Now, I put TW for twin. You can write out twin. Uh, usually, the, you try to eliminate as many keystrokes as you possibly can when you're when you're doing this, uh, just kind of for time purposes and efficiency. Okay, FIB is formation into the boundary. So anytime that the tackle is 
outside of the hash, I'm labeling that as a formation into the boundary. That's kind of my rule. Again, kind of with the slot, you have to have a, a line drawn and sand of, hey, if the, what are we counting formation into the boundary? If it's in the middle of the field, the, and I've got two receivers over here, but the tackle's inside this, the hash. I'm not going to label that FIB, but here he's, it's clearly on the hash. Tackle's clearly outside the hash. I've got two receivers in. Now, I label this because it's not usual for spread teams to put their best players into the boundary. They're usually trying to get you to either overload or they're going to motion somebody back to the field. So it, it usually gives you, hey, Every time they put the two speed into the into the boundary, I'm usually getting jet motion. So that's something I can pass on to the kids. Or as a defensive coordinator, you can say, "Hey, I know when I get this, I'm going to get jet, and I can I can call something uh, to eliminate that." So you really get three different FIBs. You get formation, which we have right here. The formation or the speed is into the boundary. Uh, you have T for trips, so I have trips into the boundary. I have three receivers. Now, even though the back is in here, that's not a trip. A trip would be, hey, I've got three receivers um, that are into the boundary. And then you have back. Now, the back is into the boundary, but because the two speed is in there, that overrules it and makes it an F. Now, if he was on the other side and we were on the other hash and you had the slot and the back, that's three receivers into the boundary but you have a strength call right there with the tight end. So I would go ahead and label that B. If you get two by two, 10 personnel, you and the back is into the boundary, you would label that B because that's an even set as well. Uh, so in, in this case, this is formation, so we're going to put F. So we didn't get a motion, uh, but we did get a shift. So initially they line up in a slot trips look. He motions across, and he gets set. So that's a shift. A motion is when the player doesn't get set a shift is when they do get set and they realign so under the motion tab i'm just going to put h across uh, and so the i don't write out all across when i write out across that means it's a motion and that quickly lets me identify hey i got a shift here because it says ac so again you have to identify the difference and especially like because you don't want just so many different data points, you can be able to use motions and shifts all in the same uh, data point by just doing that. So across would just be AC for a shift. I would spell out across for a motion. Now let's go to the play type. So let's break down the play. All right, this is a run. This is a, a QB counter bash. So the ty play type is a run. The tree, this is basically what kind of run is it? Now, you can, if you, it's really up to you. If you want to label this as a gap play because they are using a gap uh, play in the sense that they're pulling linemen, or because kind of the popularity of the bash concept has come down, especially some teams really do it, other teams don't necessarily do it, you can label it bash. So for, for here, you can either go gap and just put a G, or you can go ahead and label it bash, which that's what we're going to go ahead and label that just to make sure uh, we label that. So this is a Q counter bash, and it's going to the strong side. So all I'm going to do is put Q counter again. I'm going to put CTR, and then I'm going to write bash, and it's going to the strong side. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. So here's what we end up having. It's Q counter. I label counter CTR, and then I, t I spell out bash. That tells me that the back is going away from it. Now you could go back in here and, and label it Q counter. Uh, G, G H because that's who we're getting or Q counter bash G H and then we're going to the strong side uh, just to kind of give you a hey I know the guard and the H are pulling or the guard and the tackle are pulling uh, what that ends up letting you do is go back and look okay when they get a three down they're pulling the H or when they get a four down they're pulling the GT so it, you know it de de really depends on uh, kind of how much information you necessarily want I always have a backside route even on runs because I want to see are they RPOing, are they RPOing the read side. Here, obviously the two receivers are blocking, but I always like to check for the hitch read on the single receiver side, and again, he's blocking too. So you can either uh, leave that blank or you can just put Z block. Okay. Now DS is deep shot. Obviously this is a run, they're not passing down the field. A deep shot is any pass that they attempt that is more than 20 yards down the field. I like to get a deep shot tape so that I can look at where and when are they trying to take their deep shots or what player are they trying to get on their deep shots. 
Um, here, obviously, the target is going to be the quarterback. So I'm just going to put Q. Uh, and the result is a rush. Now, you can do the gain loss, and you can do field boundary later, uh, but not necessarily have to do that right now. Um, so let's go to the next play. Okay, again, we've got a slot twin. This time it's not into the boundary. Uh, so we will label that 20, 22 for the set. This is a gun far slot twin again. There's no formation into the boundary, so we there was no motion. This looks to be a pass. All right, this is a pass. So we're just going to label that pass. Now, the tree for passes is what kind of pass is it? Well, this is a sprint out. So you can either put SO. Uh, I like to go SPO for sprint out. Um, I've done SO before. Uh, I, I stay away from S because that means screen for me, uh, but obviously you can do something else if, if you feel like it. So here we're just going to put SPO. Uh, the play is a sprint to the weak side, so a sprint out weak. Um, and then this looks like it's a swirl corner, so I'm just going to put swirl corner. Let's look at the backside route. Z is kind of running a lazy post. So Z post. Now, I label him Z because I, if he was on the ball and this was an 11 personnel, this would be the slot, the strong slot, and so he would be Z. I usually label the second receiver or the third receiver as S or slot, and then uh, X is always away from the, from the strength unless, uh, it, well, really, it's always away from the strength. So, Or if it's an even set in ace, uh, the X is always to the boundary. That's kind of how I do that to keep uh, kind of the science behind that. Okay, the target, let's let the play run through. And he's targeting the slot. Okay, now the ball is on the one yard line. And so we can look and see uh, how far he threw it. He threw it about to the, to the 30 yard line. So really this is up to you on the discretion. I wouldn't necessarily consider this a deep shot because it is it is a sprint out and he's not setting up and he's not really trying to throw it down the field. Uh, he's he's more or less lofting up that corner. Uh, but if you want to keep it in the sense, hey, any pass over 20 yards, I want to put it in, in the deep shot so we can go ahead and put that. The target was the slot to the strong side and it was an incomplete pass. Okay, here we go again. We got another slot. Twin, this time it's into the boundary. So again, I, I said earlier, a lot of times when teams put their two receivers into the boundary, uh, they, they are going to motion it. Now, this is de a definite alert motion set because I have the back in front of the quarterback, and he's also to the slotted side. So this is going to change it a little. I've got 20 personnel again. It's a two-by-two. Two. This is gun near, so gun near, near to the strength, uh, slot twin. I've got the formation again into the boundary. Now, this is going to be uh, S2 because he's the slot, or you could just label it S. I like to tell him where he is, 2, uh, jet, because he's jet motioning. Let's let the play run through. This is a power read. So I'm going to label it as a run. This is uh, going to be a read play, and so I label it as an R so I can keep those. So this is going to be a power read jet, or you can go jet power read. I usually try and put it, uh, if the jet is going away from the motion, like let's say it's a bash concept, and they jet it over here, and then they run power read back over here. I would run power read jet, uh, but here because it is a jet power read, they're reading the jet man. I put jet power read, uh, and then it is going. They are reading the strong side, so I will just put a strength there. That way, it gives me a strength call. Now the backside route, okay, obviously. Uh, the X receiver is blocking. They're not really doing that. So you can either leave it blank or you can just put block. It uh, doesn't look like they're going to use a hitch read out of that. The target right here, who ends up carrying the ball was the slot. And then again, this was a rush concept. Um, so usually let it go all the way through. So again, this is jet, power read. Um, 
You can add on these replays. You can create another tab and a, usually a give, uh, keep, or pitch, a GKP, uh, especially if you're playing a, in a district or a conference that's really option and read heavy. That keeps track of, hey, are they really reading this or is it just one of these things where uh, they're making it look like it's a zone read, um, and they're just, but it's really inside zone and they're giving it to the quarterback. Or, hey, every time uh, they run this play, they're really trying to pitch it. They're not trying to get the quarterback to read it. It kind of gives you a chance to, to look at some things. All right, next play. Okay, this is a great example. You know, clip gets started a little early. Uh, so, again, now we've got a three-by-one formation. So, again, 20 personnel because that guy is slotted up. It's 31 because I've got three receivers and one receiver. This is going to be gun far. So, gun far, trips, slot, open. I will drop the open if this guy's a tight end and he's sitting up here. Otherwise, it's trip slot, slot open. There is no formation into the boundary. There was no motion. This is a run. Uh, again, this is a bash concept. Uh, so this is Q counter bash to the weak side. So we'll put that here. Q counter bash uh, GH again. And this is going to the weak side. Let's see what the receivers are doing over here. They're just blocking. So you could just put BLK or you could just uh, you could leave it. So the quarterback ends up pulling it and is tackled in the backfield. So again, the target is the cue. This was a rush. And then let's go to our final play that we're going to break down today. Here is a now. This is 10 personnel. So we're going to put 10 personnel. It's three by one. The back is to the trip, so that's gun near. Trips open. There's no FIB. It doesn't look like there was any motion. Okay, so the pass is a play. Now this looks like it's going to be a quick pass, okay? So I'm going to put QK for quick. If it was a drop back, it would be DB. Um, so the play here is going to be uh, really just a snag route. So you can put snag. Uh, you can put a, uh, HBO, which is kind of that fade out, and then label it like that with a HBO snag. Um, but here, we're just going to label it as a snag because this is a typical con trips concept that you get. A lot of people try and snag that guy up on the three. Uh, so let's watch the backside route. And this is just an X fade. Let's see who his target is because it's not a deep shot. This is the weak slot. So I usually go Z, strong slot, weak slot, and then X is to the bottom. So here, this will be W. Uh, and it is incomplete. Uh, so this is an example of using uh, five different plays. I know they're all pretty kind of the similar uh, concept, but again, when you're breaking down an opponent, a lot of their formations are going to be very similar. But again, this gives you kind of an idea of what to look for uh, when you're breaking down a formation and kind of going through it when you're looking at an opponent, talking about personnel, what the different set type is, formations, kind of always run through until the ball snap to do your formation and then get that in and then go back and do uh, the play type. Now, some people will do, hey, one person's got formation, the other person's got play type. Uh, really just depends on kind of the amount of people you have on your staff and kind of what you have uh, at your disposal staff wise. Um, but hopefully this was kind of a helpful enlightening, uh, way of looking at breaking down an opponent. Uh, again, on my website, I have several different articles on breaking down the run, breaking down the pass, uh, and kind of an overview of the opponent breakdown. So thank you for joining me on this episode of MQ quick hits and make sure you visit matchquarters.com. Uh, come learn the art of X.